We are looking at a painting from China, made sometime between the 16th and 17th centuries. The painting depicts various activities of women who live and work in a palace in China. This very long painting, on silk, is called a hand scroll. Because of its relatively small format, only one person, or a small group of people, could view it at one time. The many cracks and fragments we can see in the painting demonstrates that it has been unrolled and re-rolled many times. While the vibrant mineral colors do not fade, the silk foundation will fray and shatter as it breaks down chemically over time. It is unclear if this painting was made for the viewing pleasure of the women whom it depicts, or if it was a tantalizing glimpse into the lives of women intended for elite men to view. Perhaps both these audiences were possible. Typically unrolled from right to left, with only about 12 inches showing of the painting at one time, as it was unrolled to the left, the right section would be temporarily rolled. The painter's design takes the stop motion action into account. The design provides visual resting places, as well as teasers, to urge your eye forward. Let's take a look at the action taking place in this hand scroll. We will explore it by beginning on the right and moving to the left the same way it was meant to be unrolled and viewed in China. Takeout arrives. Here we see women carrying in food and dishes for picnicking. The heavy stacked luxurious red and gold lacquered food storage boxes require two people to shoulder. Imagine the delicious food inside. Here is an example of a lacquered food box in the BMA's collection. The food and dishes are coming from the kitchen, which, for fire safety reasons, is removed from the living and pleasure quarters. The women wear pink, blue, green, and gray robes and are painted in animated postures, suggesting their movement. The pine trees above that shade the ladies, along with the rocks around them, represent longevity and endurance. The blue-green color of the rocks is a reference to the blue-green mountains of the Taoist immortals, and that color emphasizes the heavenly setting we, the viewers, are invited to visit with our eyes, minds, and hearts. Longevity Dance These two red-crested, black-necked cranes are dancing between pine and banana trees among rocks. A pair of cranes signals good wishes for a bride and groom at their wedding. The crane couple also represents marital harmony between wives and husbands, and are sometimes used to celebrate birthdays of a married couple. When grouped together, cranes, pine trees, and rocks are all symbols of, and wishes for, long life. As a rebus puzzle, the combination of crane and pine is linked to three similar sayings. The first saying goes, Like the crane and pine, may you enjoy similar longevity. The second saying says, May you possess the longevity of the crane and the age of the pine. And finally, the third saying says, May you live to an advanced age similar to the pine and crane. Picking red peonies from the rocks. A woman raises her arms high above her head to pick red peonies from its rocky perch. The peony is considered as the king of flowers in Chinese art. Picking peonies is likened to gathering perpetual wealth. A bamboo grove is nestled into the background behind the peonies. Bamboo signals flexibility, endurance, and resilience. The combination of peonies among bamboo is a rebus puzzle that means, may you have peace and prosperity. Ladies hand washing and primping. Here we see a table in the foreground and a woman offering a drying towel to her bowing neighbor who has just finished washing her hands. The metal washing basin peeks out behind the pear-shaped pitcher. Pink peonies are placed in a blue vase next to a brown teapot with a white teacup. A dark dish with a gold finial on the triangular covering is perched at the edge of the table. A woman stands behind the hand washer with a red lacquer tray holding numerous white dishes. Like the first ladies we met at the beginning of this scroll who were bringing food, 
These three women are all servants, which is indicated by their narrow sleeves, restrained clothing, and less elaborate hairstyles. To the left of the servant women stand two higher-ranking women. Their higher rank is demonstrated in their full, long sleeves, indicating they do not work with those hands. Their high hairstyles also require greater effort and the assistance of a hairstylist. One woman adjusts the jewelry of her hairpins, raising both her hands to primp before greeting the other palace women. Notice that both these high-ranking women wear more colorful clothing composed of more luxurious textiles than the servant women. Music in the Phoenix and Parasol Tree Pavilion Placed between the two trunks of the tall parasol trees, the artist has rendered the pierced rock formation in the shape of a preening phoenix. The phoenix is said to roost in parasol trees, a symbol of the empress. True phoenixes are said to only appear in times of peace and prosperity. The phoenix is attracted by music made by humans. Hence, this phoenix rock is placed close to the music pavilion. Inside the pavilion, a high-ranking woman plays the di zi flute, accompanied by a slightly lower status woman strumming a zhong ren lute. Both musicians face the viewer, but another woman is seated with her back to the viewer as she appreciates the musician's performance. These three ladies are seated in a pavilion with cinnabar red columns adorned with blue-green eaves and pierced railing supports. The structure of the pavilion provides shade and encourages cooling breezes during the hot summer months. The stone plinth of the pavilion is ornately carved with cloud motifs. Listening in the wings of the music pavilion, one woman leans affectionately on the shoulder of a lady in red as they both listen to the tunes echoing from the music pavilion. Nearby, a child attendant holds a pipa lute still wrapped in a patterned cloth. Have they just finished or are they waiting their turn to play music? Or are they just enjoying the music? Crossing the stream on a bridge. Two women walk towards the bridge over a stream. Most likely, this stream has been diverted through the palace grounds to provide musical sounds of a babbling brook as well as cool breezes. A bamboo grove is nestled behind the blue-green rocks. Admiring Scroll Paintings Four women bend over a hanging scroll painting of white peony flowers. They have unrolled this painting for temporary viewing. Another woman looks on from the side as she holds a partially rolled scroll. Is this the next viewing pleasure or one just completed? Do you see the two ladies chatting with their heads just showing through the hole in the rocks? Above and behind the women is an ornate palace. It is elegantly adorned with carved white stone cloud pillars and railings that sport carved lion finials, both of which define a shaded veranda. Can you find the golden dragon in clouds motif that decorates the wide red cinnabar lacquer pillar? The palace walls are painted with three shades of light and dark blue. These borders are set within black and gold lacquer frames. It cost a pretty penny. Picking Pink Peonies, a message delivered. A woman picks pink peonies from over her head from the pierced rock. The combination of peony and rock is a rebus puzzle, meaning may you live long and achieve wealth and honor. A leafy tall parasol tree towers above the broadleaf banana trees. The banana trees signify summer's abundance. A blue robed woman reads a book with her friend. Perhaps they are reading aloud. Nearby, a woman wearing a black head covering and a servant leaning on a rock appear to listen in. Two children and a woman wearing a blue shawl stand behind the readers, but are listening to someone else. This group of three appear to concentrate on the message spoken by the woman holding a wrapped stringed chin zither in her right arm. This woman's left arm gestures to the left. Resting at her feet is a short-eared Pekingese dog with a dark nose and ears, white feet and chest, and brown fur. Dancing peacocks, a deer couple, and bringing a red cloth. 
A woman holding an auspicious red cloth descends the steps of the palace. The steps are divided into three sections to indicate the high status of the building. The carved lion finials along the stairs railings not only beautify the space, but also provide symbolic protection. A peacock and a peahen dance on the lower steps. Considered a bird of culture that brings civilization to the world, peacocks are also affiliated with the nine virtues of proper appearance, clear voice, graceful walk, punctuality, meaning being on time, restrained appetite, contentment, loyalty, morality, so doing the right thing, and the ability to learn from its faults. These qualities might be interpreted as a backhanded compliment for both women and civil officials of the third rank who wear peacocks as symbols of their rank. Peacocks may be viewed as a reminder of their revered but still subservient positions. As this is a peacock couple, they also serve as a reminder of the role of a married couple. Peeking out from the sides of a tall pine tree are two deer. In addition to representing longevity and salary, two deer signify the rebus puzzle, may all roads be smooth. The deer appear to be carefully watching the game players. A kitty cat perched on a rock. Game playing. Is music wanted? A cat is perched on a rock, observing the game below. The Chinese name for cat, Mao, is also the same spoken word, meaning living to be in your 80s. The black and white fur of the cat is a reference to potential graying hair of the aged. Thus, when viewed together, the cat, rock, pine tree, and deer all emphasize long life. Two women play a game of strategy called Wei Zi in Chinese, but best known in the West by the Japanese name Go. The game table has a marble inlaid top that has incised lines for play, supported by a red lacquered wooden frame and legs. These are luxuries. The black and white game pieces are beginning to be placed on the board, but others remain in the brown containers held by or placed near the two seated women players. The seated woman in a green robe and a standing woman bowed over the table are observers. Another seated woman turns to an attendant who holds an unwrapped Zhongyuan lute. Perhaps they are discussing whether music would enhance or detract from the game. Admiring the blooming lotus pond, where mandarin duck couples feed. Demonstrating the summer's heat, a woman with a pink robe holds a blue leaf-shaped fan. Just below, among the rocks, are white orchid cymbidium flowers. Cymbidium orchids can be understood to symbolically mean, may you have many grandsons. Two high-ranking women embrace by the red railing as they look out at the lotus pond. The white lotus flowers and green lotus leaves are at different stages of budding and unfolding along the top of the painting. Near the lotus leaves are the colorful feathers of a mandarin duck couple. Their heads are submerged below the water as they feed. In Chinese art, mandarin duck couples signify a happy marriage. Swallows fly and the willow trees sway at the lotus pond. Here we have a detailed view of the lotus pond. Flying among the lotuses and willow branches are two split-tailed swallows. Swallow birds, in Chinese art, indicate celebratory banquets. Visible in the lower right, between the willow branches, mandarin ducks swim. Water-loving willow trees are revered in China, where their leaves and bark may be taken medicinally. Poets liken the willow trees' light and airy branches that sway so easily in the wind to the movement of beautiful women. In the steamy summers, all seek to rest in their cooling shade. Musical Cruise on the Lotus Pond Three women are seated underneath a blue-trimmed canopy to protect them from the sun. The woman in a gray robe plays the xiao flute as a woman wearing pink and another in green listen. At the front prow of the boat, a gray cloth is tied, waiting for docking. A wave pattern adorns the side of the brown boat. An attendant prepares some refreshment for the seated ladies, bending over a red tray filled with white vessels. Two white cups are already placed on freshly picked lotus leaf mats. At the stern of a boat, 
A standing oars person uses the single oar to paddle and steer the pleasure boat among the lotuses.